The collection of all possible universes is known as the multiverse. It is assumed that all of existence, all of space, time, matter, energy, information, and the physical laws and constants that characterize them comes from these universes combined. Parallel universes, flat universes, other universes, alternate universes, multiple universes, plane universes, parent and child universes. Many universes or many worlds are some of the terms used to describe the several realities that make up the multiverse. The idea that the multiverse is made up of disparate realities, connected by the same physical principles, is one that is frequently held to be true. To begin with, how will the other universe's existence be verified? While all cosmologists acknowledge that some parts of the cosmos are inaccessible to human telescopes, there comes a point at which believability fades when one considers the possibility of an endless number of universes. As one descends that slope, less and less is amenable to scientific verification and more and more must be accepted on faith. Thus, extreme multiverse interpretations remind one of theological debates. In fact, it is just as ad hoc to invoke an infinite number of unseen worlds as it is to invoke an unseen creator to explain the peculiarities of the one we can see. Although the multiverse idea is presented in a scientific manner, it nevertheless necessitates a similar leap of faith. The idea of a multiverse, or several realities, has been considered historically, even in Greek philosophy. It has changed over time and been discussed in a number of disciplines, including as philosophy, physics and cosmology. Given that it is impossible to refute empirically, some physicists contend that the multiverse is a philosophical idea rather than a scientific theory. Within the physics community, there have been multiverse theorists and detractors in recent years. No statistically significant evidence for other universes has been discovered despite the fact that some scientists have examined data in search of evidence. The multiverse idea is criticized for raising unanswered metaphysical questions and for lacking testability and falsifiability, both of which are necessary for scientific investigation. Max Tegmark and Brian Greene have proposed different classification schemes for multiverses and universes. Tegmark's four-level classification consists of level one being an extension of our universe, level two, universes with different physical constants, Level 3 as many worlds interpretation of quantum mechanics and Level 4 being the ultimate ensemble. Brian Greene's nine types of multiverses include quilted, inflationary, brain, cyclic, landscape, quantum, holographic, simulated and ultimate. In order to explain the existence and interactions of numerous worlds, the theories investigate different spatial dimensions, natural laws and mathematical structures. Black hole cosmology, M-theory, cyclic theories, and twin world models are a few more multiverse theories. According to the anthropic principle, the fine-tuning of our own universe for conscious life could be explained by the presence of several worlds, each with its own set of physical rules. But according to the weak anthropic principle, we are among the rare universes where life is supported Proponents such as Max Tegmark contend that the multiverse is more elegant and simpler than a single universe, and debates about Occam's razor and the simplicity of the multiverse EVA single universe occur. Within the framework of the anthropic principle, there is disagreement about the many worlds interpretation that all potential worlds exist and are equally real to our own. The idea that physics seems to be optimized for life is among the most astonishing scientific findings of the last several years. This implies that a very specific range of numbers in physics has to be met in order for life to exist. The amount of dark energy 
which drives the universe's accelerating expansion, is one example of fine-tuning that most physicists find puzzling. Matter would not have been able to clump together if that force had been somewhat stronger. There would have been no stars, planets, or any structure complexity if two particles had never joined, and hence no life. That force would not have counteracted gravity if it had been much weaker. This implies that there would have been no stars, planets, or life in the cosmos if it had collapsed back on itself in the first instant of creation. Like Goldilocks porridge, the power of dark energy has to be just right in order to support the potential of life. This has long struck me as the most likely explanation for fine-tuning. But the assumption from fine-tuning to a multiverse has been recognized by specialists in probability mathematics as an example of erroneous thinking. It specifically accuses proponents of multiverse theory of what is known as the inverse gambler's fallacy. Imagine that one night, when I am the only player in the neighborhood bingo hall, chance is that I had a phenomenal run of luck and all of the numbers come up in the first minute. If it is this way, must assume that there must be a lot of people playing bingo in other bingo halls tonight. My logic is that it's not that unlikely that someone would get all of their numbers called out in the first minute if there are many people performing across the nation. However, this is an example of the fallacy of the inverted gambler. Probability theory states that there is no more chance than any other for me to have such a run of luck, regardless of the number of players in other bingo halls across the nation. It resembles rolling dice. We incorrectly believe that our chances of getting sixes in the ensuing throws are decreased if we string together multiple sixes. Furthermore, we mistakenly believe that there must have been a ton of sixes in the past if we don't receive any for a time. However, every throw actually has an identical and precise one in six chance of landing on a certain number. Theorists of the multiverse make the same mistake. They're thinking, wow, how improbable that our universe has the right numbers for life. There must be many other universes out there with the wrong numbers. This confirms what I was already thinking. I can use other people's bingo games to explain the streak of luck. Similar to a die throw, this particular universe had a specified low chance of getting the right numbers when it was formed. Multiverse theorists now introduce the anthropic principle, which holds that since we are here, we could not have witnessed a universe unsuitable for life. Yet that does not rule out the existence of these other universes. Imagine that a psychotic marksman is concealed in the rear of the bingo hall, ready to fire at any time a number appears that isn't on my bingo card. Now, the scenario is comparable to fine-tuning in the actual world. Just as we could not have observed a cosmos with the wrong numbers for life, I could not have observed anything other than the right numbers to win. I would be incorrect to assume that a large number of individuals play bingo. Similar to this, multiverse theorists' conclusions on fine-tuning to multiple worlds are incorrect. But isn't there empirical proof of a multiverse? Both yes and no. Surprisingly, no one has ever examined the links between the inverse gambler's fallacy and the scientific evidence for the multiverse, as I do in my book. The multiverse is supported by the scientific hypothesis of inflation, which holds that the early cosmos expanded enormously in size. If inflation is possible, it is probably occurring in various regions of space, giving rise to separate universes. There is no proof that the numbers in the many universes' local physics differ, even if this could provide us with hints of a multiverse of some sort. The failure of the multiverse explanation has a deeper cause. The requirement of entire evidence, which requires us to use the most precise evidence we have access to, is the guiding concept of probabilistic reasoning. When it comes to fine-tuning, the most concrete proof available to those who hold the multiverse theory is not just that a world exists, but that this particular one is fine-tuned. It is highly unlikely that this particular world, as opposed to any other among millions, would be fine-tuned 
if we accept the multiverse theory that the constants of our universe were produced by probabilistic processes. The theory falls short of explaining the evidence after we formulate it correctly. It is widely accepted in science that these numbers have not changed since the Big Bang. We have a decision to make if this is accurate. Either our universe just so happens to have the correct numbers, or it's a huge coincidence. Alternatively, the numbers could reflect some unseen innate principle that propels or guides nature to produce complexity and life in some way. I don't think it's possible to take the first choice seriously. In my book, I offer a hypothesis of the second choice, cosmic purpose, and explore how it relates to the meaning and purpose of humanity. This is not the science we were expecting to find. Similar, like when we first began to receive proof that we weren't the center of the universe in the 16th century. Many found it difficult to believe that the world they had grown accustomed to could no longer account for the evidence. I think that with fine tuning, we are currently in a similar scenario. One day, we might look back and wonder why we spent so much time ignoring the obvious, that life exists because the cosmos is biased in favor of it. It is believed that the multiverse extends much beyond the cosmic horizon. It is thought to be so far away that there is little chance that any proof will ever be discovered. Some theorists do not think that the absence of empirical testability and falsifiability is a significant worry. Many physicists who discuss the multiverse are not particularly interested in parallel universes, particularly those who support the string landscape. They don't care about criticisms of the multiverse theory. Internal consistency and, one hopes, further scientific testing will determine whether or not their hypotheses survive. The concept of the multiverse has been put out by scientists to explain the nature of existence. In the end, it does not provide an answer to such issues since it is a metaphysical problem that cannot be handled by empirical research. He contends that observational testing should not be abandoned because it is fundamental to science. Even though I'm skeptical, I believe that thinking about the multiverse is a great way to consider the nature of science and the ultimate purpose of life. It's a careful route to take. The existence of parallel universes is a conjecture that has not been proven. That uncertainty is something we will have to deal with. Philosophical conjecture with a scientific foundation, such as multiverse theories, is perfectly acceptable. However, we ought to call it what it is. Not all of the potential universes, regardless of their histories or natural variables, may come to pass at all, and some may occur repeatedly. In certain possible theories, for instance, there might be an unlimited number of universes spanning an endless amount of time, but only a tiny or relatively small number of genuine universes where humanity could exist and only one where it ever does. According to certain theories, a universe that contains life, in the form it has on Earth, is in a certain sense radically non-ergodic, in that the vast majority of possible organisms will never be realized exists. However, other scientists, theories, and popular literature imagine a multiverse where worlds are sufficiently similar that humans exist in numerous distinct, equally real universes with different histories. The validity of the other worlds in the many worlds interpretation of quantum mechanics is a topic of discussion. In the context of quantum Darwinism, it is not necessary to embrace a many-worlds interpretation where every branch is equally genuine. 